Welcome to the School of Global Citizenry. My name is Lindsay Andrioli Comstock. Today, for many people around the world, is October 17th, 2019. Today is National Spirit Day. Each year on the third Thursday in October, millions of people around the world go purple, signaling their promise to speak out against bullying and stand with lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer youth who are disproportionately facing bullying and harassment because of their sexual orientation and or gender identity. Today, to help us learn more about the incredible work that is being done on behalf of queer youth, I am joined by Jane Clementi, mother of three amazing sons and CEO of the Tyler Clementi Foundation. Jane, thank you so much for joining us today. It is truly an honor. Thank you, Lindsay. It's a pleasure to be here with you, especially yeah. on Spirit. Jane, tell us, what is cyberbullying? I know that's a lot of the work that you're doing right now. What is cyberbullying and how does it differ, say, from what some of us might call schoolyard or face-to-face -face bullying? Sure. Yes, that is a component of what we are working on. Um, and cyberbullying is bullying, which is harassment, unwanted aggressive actions or words against a person, usually repetitively, but in the digital space in the cyber world and so that makes social it cyber media world. social uh, media it could be text it could even be via emails you know anything uh, that's being transmitted and it could be words being transmitted through text um but it could also be uh photographs or pictures or you know revenge porn that is shared pictures that mm. should not be shared publicly um and that is part of what we're working on. Um, I think mostly because there are definitely some nuances with cyberbullying that are different than, as you mentioned, maybe to youth in the, in the schoolyard. One of those nuances is not just seen at in the school and then you can go home to the privacy of your home, to the comfort of people that love you and surround you with love. Um, you actually can't escape it or oftentimes the target does not escape it because they get caught up in that downward spiral of continually reading those texts or seeing those pictures. We think that's what one of the things that happened with Tyler. Um, Tyler's story happened in 2010 and that was even before the smartphone. Mm. He only had his laptop and he only had Wi-Fi when he had the phone, when he had his laptop with him and Wi-Fi wasn't as readily available as it is now, but he had even taken screenshots. The last thing he looked at before going to New York was the, um, the, the posts and the jokes and the comments. And I do think that helped make his reality very distorted and twisted. Um, mm. And added to his story um, and, and the ending of his story, sadly. But also the other nuance is that people think that they're anonymous online and they, they say the most horrible things sometimes because they don't really see the pain in someone's eyes. They don't think about the consequences of their words possibly or their actions by posting pictures. Um, and they think nobody knows that it's them. Um, and oftentimes that's true. Sometimes you can trace it back though, actually. So, you know, do doing forensics on, on such, uh, on the computer and laptop. We, um, at least in Tyler's story, having the help of people that knew how to do that, you could tell where the pictures and, and, and posts were coming from. Wow. Um, and I, I think if you can't say something to someone's face, you really shouldn't say it at all. Um, well that's said. just common sense. I think sometimes we have to go back to very simple um, solutions to be these very complex problems and to reread what they've written. What is the intent of that text, that social media post, even that email? If it's not building them up, if it is tearing someone down and destroying someone's character, my hope is that they would rewrite it to build them up or at the very least maybe just discard the message or the text altogether or the mm -hmm. social media post. Um, I think we can do simple things like that to, to combat this really complex issue. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've heard it said before, Jane, that, you know, once it hits cyberspace, it never goes away. It takes on a life of its own in some respect. Jane, for those who don't know the story, tell us um, how it is that you and your family, your husband, came to be so interested and so impassioned about cyberbullying and, and preventing it? 
Sure. Honor our son, Tyler, who made national headlines actually in 2010, unfortunately for all the wrong reasons. Um, it was then that he had just started his freshman year at Rutgers and he became the target in a cyberbullying incident. Mm -hmm. His roommate live streamed Tyler in a sexual encounter with another man and then started posting um, tweets and posts and on social media um, announcing that event to a very a very private event to the entire world um, and it was there that so many people started logging in and um, and I do believe that Tyler was targeted simply because of his sexual orientation mm -hmm. it was a god-given gift and a trait of, of Tyler's but sadly it also made Tyler different than his roommate and it was that difference that Tyler's roommate used to humiliate Tyler in Front of his new dorm mates, his new peers. And um, as Tyler continued to read those jokes and comments, as I said before, his reality became very twisted and distorted and he became very isolated and made a terrible, terrible decision. Um, one that we can never change or undo. I often state that it's a permanent decision to a temporary situation, a situation we could have fixed but sadly he made a permanent decision and he died by suicide on September 22nd uh, 2010 and you know we would give anything to go back to try to change Tyler's actions but of course we both know that that's not realistic and what we had to do was move forward and for us to move forward we decided to make sure that the rest of the world knows that it's not acceptable to set up a recording device in someone's private dorm room and it's not acceptable to send out messages like come join in and watch the show because right. someone's private life is not a show to be seen and it is for those reasons that we started the foundation to make sure no one else would ever feel that pain or the shame or the humiliation that Tyler experienced. So we decided to focus on cyberbullying. There were many, or and bullying in general, there were many reasons to, um, that we could have chosen that intersected with Tyler's story, but we specific, we wanted to put an end, our mission is to put an end to all online and offline bullying mm. in schools, workplaces, and faith communities. Because I do believe bullying can be more than just one youth, one-to-one, -one, or young people, or it, and if we don't change those behaviors, it just goes on into adulthood as well. Yes. Um, so bullying behavior can continue, as well as it doesn't have to be just one-on-one, -on -one, as I said, it could be with marginalized groups as well. Um, um, if we, the power imbalance is always a power imbalance with, with a bullying situation. So giving certain people rights and privileges or, or protections that other groups of people do not experience, that, that's a form of bullying in my, in my opinion. What breaks my heart as a Christian is the fact that um, when, when people misuse scripture, um, and mm. teachings to devalue the human spirit and cause so much pain and despair based on bias and dogma and discrimination. Absolutely. So that's why we have the schools, workplaces, and faith communities. Jane, incredibly important, amazing work, born out of tragic, absolutely tragic uh, situation. A moment in time for you and your family that will never be forgotten. Um, I would imagine that in every talk with parents at every school that you go to, you carry that grief with you. Uh, how could you not as a mother? And at the same time, you've turned that into this incredible resource for so many people. Uh, I remember Tyler's story um, when it hit the news. It was where I had the courage to come out myself. It, it stuck in my, my mind and my heart. I can't imagine what he went through. I can't imagine what you as his mother went through. Um, but to be able to turn that into a resource for people like myself um, and, and, and so many others who find themselves at different times in their own journey of, um, of, of sexuality and claiming selfhood, wondering where the resources are, um, also wondering where to point our loved ones and our family members when they're looking for resources to try to, try to figure out what does is, what is this relationship look like now. All I can say is thank you for the incredible work that you're doing now, born out of such a tragic time uh, in your family's life. Thank you. It, and it was not a, a chosen <laughs> journey, for sure, as you, as you say. And it wasn't even a chosen journey immediately 
for us where what we were going to do with that grief um, mm -hmm. and I sat in that grief I still sit in that grief for a very long time but at least the fog that I was experiencing for the initial few years has lifted a little so I can think a little bit clearer and I can see um, all the injustices now in the world you know it's amazing I was living in this I like to say bubble of bliss here in suburbia New Jersey in the United oh. States and um, I was so unaware of so much of the pain that is being caused by society by by that dogma of religion as well um, when I didn't think it mattered to me um, but it matters to each and every one of us, whether whether we are personally affected by it or not. And you never know in the, what the future will have as to whether it will be immediately present in your immediate life with your children or with a, a sibling or a spouse or a cousin or, um, you know, how it's going to affect you. Um, and that grief never, ever goes away. It's just you learn to have a peace about it. And by talking about Tyler now, it, it, it gives me that peace. Initially, I must say, in my grief, I did not want to talk about Tyler. He was mine, and the wow. world was trying to take him mm -hmm. in a way. His name was plastered all over these headlines, yeah. and he was, he was not theirs. He was mine, and I just wanted him to be mine. Um, I wanted him to physically be here, um, but he was mine. And, and, and that's an interesting thought because it took me a, a year or two before I kind of came out of that fog, as I said, or years, three or four, but I started hearing people's stories about how Tyler's story or what they knew of Tyler's story through right. the headlines meant to them or how that encouraged them to maybe come out or encourage many celebrities at the time to come out. Sadly, tragically, there were several deaths in that form. It wasn't just Tyler's, but Tyler's name seemed to always rise up into those headlines for some reason. Um, we did incorporate into a foundation. My husband could see a little bit uh, that there were these great conversations happening and that there was something happening that was greater than us. And so all I could say was, yes, okay, go ahead, do whatever. Um, I didn't really come forward publicly for many, for a year or more um, because it was just, there was nothing for me to say or add because I had no words um, at mm -hmm. all. I was totally empty and um, broken. But um, now I love to share about Tyler and it's taken me a journey. I mean, I, I initially in my grief, I took all the pictures away from our, out of our house. Well, I mean, the strength that you have, Jane, ju just to continue telling uh, this Tyler story uh, so that so many folks can can have the baseline education they need to understand why cyberbullying is such an important topic, why understanding, you know, preventing bullying before it becomes just an adult trait is so important. Um, but that strength that you and your family bring to telling this story over and over, such an intimate part of your own lives, uh, speaks to your strength. And it's truly a gift um, that you give so many of us. And then the foundation it is just another step uh, of, of resources and programming that just um, is doing that hard work of preventing some, you know, preventing and hopefully uh, pushing back against a trend that really yeah. does need to end um, of thinking that we can somehow say anything online and that it's okay and that we're somehow protected because we're not in the same room with somebody. Right. So, and I'm all for free speech, but I like to have civil respectful conversations about issues we don't need to tear somebody's personality or character down or their sure. humanity down you know we have to discuss the issues we're not going to all agree on all the issues but we cannot attack people um, right. for who they are um, and you know things that cannot be changed about them whatever that is you know it's right. people use whatever different they have against somebody else. And we, we cannot continue to do that as a culture. Um, so that's why we are on a, a movement to have a culture of kindness and respect. And I do believe it is possible. I am hopeful it is possible. I mean, you have to hope for good things and, and big things if, if there's anything to have hope in, right? Absolutely. Jane, as you were t sharing uh, Tyler, parts of Tyler's story, one of the things I learned uh, just in, in briefly hearing his story again is the complexity of cyberbullying, how forensically finding how these things take on a life of their own. I, 
I, I had no idea, you know, you just think, oh, it's one Facebook post or it's one Twitter tweet, you know, when in reality, these things become viral. I, you know, that alone is a learning for me that, you know, I know somebody can reshare something, but forensically, I had not even thought about following kind of the paper trail, if you will, uh, of how these yeah. things go viral and continue to harm, harm, harm over and over again. You know, you think they're put to rest and then they resurface again um so the you know the 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 the, the spiral of, of uh, you know if you think it's as finished and then it resurfaces again as well as you don't really even know how many people have seen it you know right. you might see how many people have liked it or disliked it or made a little emoji thing or commented but i know as a foundation we have a of um, a Facebook page also. And because we're an organization, we get to see how many people have seen it. And sometimes even though there's only two or three likes, thousands of people, it's come up on their newsfeed, you know? Yeah. And when things are not settling right with you as a person, your head can make things go even larger. So even if only three people saw it, there's the potential that thousands saw it and you believe inside of you that thousands have seen it and it makes you feel even more shame, greater yeah. shame. And shame is the worst emotion to feel, I believe. Absolutely. Um, as, as a person, I, you know, and I, I think that's what Tyler experienced. I mean, there's so many levels as to Tyler's story. Many people said it was just coming out and he was just coming out to several people. But as an adult, I would not want my private moments being seen by anyone. And to me, that would be horrendous and, and i'm sure that that had a huge part in tyler's story even more than the fact that he was starting to come out um Absolutely. because he was and he was confident in in and who he was but the fact that you still don't want people seeing you in this private compromising moment right. um i mean out or not I, that's private and i'm an adult imagine a, an 18 year old you know who really just isn't thinking clearly, he's, who's very spontaneous, who doesn't, who thinks he has all the answers, because Tyler always was a very good resourceful person, uh, and he was a very determined person. When he set his mind on something, he would follow through until it was completed, and these are all great traits, except if you're depressed and you're thinking about ending your life. Terrible, terrible traits to have. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, yeah, not being able to see the resources because he did have resources both at Rutgers, which has, has many programs in place, as well as, you know, at home. He had those resources and he had even just come out to his brother, which I had not known that they had come out to each other. My older son is also gay. Um, he and his husband live nearby in Brooklyn um, and he's doing well. But, you know, so Tyler had these resources and he couldn't see them. And in that dark time after Tyler's passing, I I learned all too personally that you don't see the resources all around you. I mean, our family was wow. embraced by people from all over the country, all over the world. We even got letters. We had people nearby coming to visit and, and supporting us. And when you're in that dark place, it doesn't really matter. And you don't right. see those resources. Yeah, it doesn't fix the pain. Yeah. Right. Well, that is a that's a perfect reason to shift now. Jane, tell me about these amazing programs and resources that the Tyler Clementi Foundation is offering. I, I've heard about it, movements and toolkits and all kinds of things. Uh, what's happening and how can we get our global learners involved in what you're doing? Great question, Lindsay. Um, and the beauty is that they, the global learners can definitely get involved because everything is on our website. It's all free and downloadable. So it's all right there at tylerclementi.org. Um, and I know you're going to put that up. Um, one of our very first initiatives that we started was our Upstander Pledge. Um, okay. Because one of the things that we saw when we were hearing about what had happened to Tyler was that there were lots of people who were seeing what was happening and no one intervened. No one um, mm -hmm. tried to help Tyler. No one tried to stop it. And when I was then learning about bullying, because again, I was living in my bubble of bliss, not aware of much, but um, one of the things about bullying is that it's this power imbalance and it's, if you can't, have it shown among a lot of people, then then you lose some of that power. So mm -hmm. when the, uh, there is a bullying situation in almost 90 or more 
uh, percent of the time, there are bystanders, passive mm -hmm. bystanders that are doing nothing, that are seeing something and they're not saying anything. Okay. So we want to passive bystanders into active upstanders that stand up, that intervene, awesome. that say something, and that interrupt what was happening. And of course, we never ever want to have anyone come into harm's way. So if you feel comfortable, if you know the people involved in interrupting the situation, even sometimes just by um, interrupting it with a joke, or maybe even calling it out, if, if, it's, if it's racial slurs or homophobic words, just saying, you know, I don't find those words funny, you know, mm -hmm. like breaking it up that way, or even mm -hmm. removing the target from the situation, you know, maybe, you know, let's go over this way, some right. type of, and if that doesn't change, or if you don't feel safe, then reporting it to a trusted adult, you know, mm -hmm. if it's a youth, reporting it to a teacher, reporting it to an administrator, administrator, even a lunchroom aide, whatever, if it's in the workplace, reporting it to your supervisor, but get the behavior acknowledged and then an intervention can be hap can happen. And of course, the most important to me, I do believe, is um, reaching out to the person that's being targeted, mm -hmm. making sure that they know that you are there for them, making sure they know their resources, making sure they know that you're they're not alone and being isolated, um, that they have support. I think that is key. I think if Tyler had had an upstander in his life, I think, again, it would not have been the end of the story. It would have just been a bump in the road. Uh, I, I do believe that without a, a doubt. And of course, upstanders are always people that are respectful and have respectful, compassionate, um, mm -hmm. civil conversations um, and don't humiliate anyone um, mm -hmm. and you can go online to our website um, and pledge to be an upstander yes, right on our, right. our website this is a paper copy but it's electronic so we really want people to go to our website to, um, to pledge to be an upstander because we are right now in the middle of our million upstander movement we started it last year um, in 2018 in the in the looking forward to 2020, you know, like, like 2020 vision. Also the fact that in 2020, it will be Tyler's 10 year anniversary of his passing. Mm -hmm. um, so we feel that we really can have an impact in society if we have a million upstanders. And then maybe, maybe we'll need 2 million or 3 million. We want to spread the uh, idea of being an upstander, um, an active upstander, not a passive bystander. Um, it's nothing new. I mean, people have been talking about bystanders for a very long time, um, but we really are actively pursuing making sure pen to paper gives somebody some action sometimes or fingers to keyboards, whichever the case may be, um, of putting your name to it, you, you maybe will think twice when you see somebody being Absolutely. humiliated or targeted. So I Absolutely. think that that's key. And then one of the things is what we really want to do is move further upstream and prevent bullying before it even happens. Because of course, not all bullying situations end in the same devastating, drastic um, consequences like Tyler's story. But with that said, you have to acknowledge that all bullying hurts at the time. No one likes mm -hmm. to be targeted That's and right. isolated out. Um, and then that leaves lasting scars, sometimes physical, sometimes emotional, but there are definitely lasting scars. And we want to prevent that from happening. So we have started something called Hashtag Day One. And what that is, is a downloadable script. So it's all right there, free for the asking on um, their various groups and ages, but we want a leader in a community to stand up, and that could be a youth leader, it could be a teacher, could be, we even have one for Christian communities and one for Jewish communities, so it could be um, a, a rabbi or, or a minister or someone that would stand up on the very first day of maybe camp or classroom that says, you know, we're value everyone here in this community and we are not going to allow anyone to be targeted because of whether it's race religion ethnicity a body shape or size or ability sexual orientation it. gender identity and it just listen 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 it's about a three minute script i will tell you it's three minutes um here in this community and then getting an acknowledgement back because whatever makes you special and precious you should not be targeted for and mm -hmm. it should not be cause to humiliate you and that's what we are so um in, in involved with and really want people to engage up with us in um setting these safe communities uh, for everyone uh, 
and it's and again it's downloadable and then from there if you do day one first then we ask you to maybe ask if the people want to be upstanders in your community and you can yeah. sign the upstander pledge as well so it's a like a chicken and the egg kind of thing is it the upstander you become an upstander first and then implement day one in your community or maybe your community implements day one and then you become an upstander either way um, we just want to make sure that everyone is valued and everyone has, is respected and that we share kindness it's really simple mm -hmm. Um, I think it's simple. Obviously, it's yeah. not so simple for everyone or else we wouldn't be having this conversation That's today, right? right? That's right. Um, but Jane, what I love that you're doing is you're not just calling something out that we should or shouldn't be doing in society. You're giving us the language. You're giving us the tools uh, to be able to be that upstander. You're giving us uh, practical steps to say, Hey, why don't you come over here? Let's go grab a, you know, a Slurpee. Let's let's get away from this situation. Or, you know, hey, this is not okay. These jokes are harmful. Like, it doesn't matter that the person that we're joking about isn't here. This community should not be talked about like this. You're giving us tools and language, uh, and you're backing up that call to do or not do something in society with with the real resources and the language to do it. And I think that that's just so key and helping move this movement forward of, of safe environments where people are not, where bullies are not holding us hostage in this situation any longer, but instead we know that we have advocates around every corner. I think that's what I love the most right. about what you're doing at the foundation. Yeah. Thank you. Because it is about power and it, sometimes it's harder to, to, change the behavior of the person that's being aggressive but they're all these bystanders so why not empower them that's to right. speak up and stand up that's right because we, so we can have, change the dynamic yeah we have our own power and we power. can assert that in different ways um to kind of shift the dynamic right. Um, and this is just yep. really valuable, really valuable for information. And it doesn't matter how old or young we are. I think it, it all applies, you know, from playground to, you know, board meetings. I think we've all seen an, uh, a situation or been part of a situation, um, perhaps less dramatic and, and, and less, uh, less volatile. But, but I, I think that we have to cut it off at the pass and that you're doing that amazing work and you're inviting us into that conversation. And, um, I hope that our global learners will will take that pledge wherever they are in the world and be part of this upstanding. Absolutely. Event. Yeah. We've had so people cool. pledge from all over the world. So that's please wonderful. join us. Join that's us on great. our movement. Great. Jane, yes. let me ask you, what would you say to a young person and perhaps you encounter them in the work that you do in the world today? But what would you say to a young person who finds themselves in a bullying situation, perhaps on social media? and they feel like they don't have anywhere to turn. What would be your advice to them? So advice is def definitely not my strong suit because I feel like, I know I've learned a lot in the last um, nine years, but it, it's not something that I hold in my head that I have, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> um, but certainly, if someone is in the middle of a of a difficult situation, always bring in an adult. I think if mm -hmm. an adult were in Tyler's story, I mean, in his situation, the law was actually being broken, and if it had been reported to the the police as it should have been, mm -hmm. um, I think an adult would have been brought in, and he would have gotten the resources he needs. Most likely, if it is happening in the digital world, you need to get out of that. Um, social media platform or mm -hmm. or block that person's text. Different social media platforms have different methods of reporting it. Many are using even artificial intelligence and human intelligence to even identify it in wow. advance. But if it hasn't been identified by that platform, you need to get out of that platform at least temporarily until the aggressor can, you know, can be stopped. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you bring in an adult that they can help you and they can talk you through some of your solutions. Um, matter of fact, I was just talking at a high school last year. I said, these are some difficult conversations to have. So why don't you go home and initiate them with your parents? Well <laughs> so you have, a, and I, so you have a plan in place because statistically speaking, it's not if you're going to be targeted, but when you're going to be targeted and wow. be prepared for it. You know? wow. And the thing is, is, 
it's, it's unrealistic to think that a youth is going to be able to stay out of the digital world. I mean, mm -hmm. that is our world and that's where we're going. And it is intended and created for good. So let's use it for that good and not mm -hmm. weaponize it as weapon of harm and destruction like in Tyler's story. Um, so if you have those proactive conversations, I think many youth don't even want to share it with their parents because they're afraid their parents are going to take their devices from them. And right. that's not the solution, taking the device, you know, um, and I would want them to know that they are not alone, that they are loved and that they are special and precious and that we need them to go forward to make sure that the world is a better place because they're the ones that are going to do it. Well, I think that's some pretty good advice right there. That's wonderful advice. And, and it's a great reminder to, to uh, guardians and parents to, to be actively involved. You know, we don't have to take devices, but ask your kids, ask, ask those that you, that you lead as a, as a group leader of some kind. Are you having uh, good conversations? Find some way to uh, open this conversation with them so that you can be in a dialogue and encourage them to share if they are having a tough situation or they are being bullied and, right. and perhaps they don't have yet the confidence to reach out and ask for that kind of help. That's a good reminder um, to those, those of us who, who work with young people to be proactive and in, in trying to get involved in that way. Absolutely. And the thing is, is people are, youth today are getting devices younger and younger. We did a mm -hmm. poll with um, AT&T uh, in um, 2018 and there were parents that identified that there were youth as young as three and four years old using devices that were connected to the internet. Wow. So maybe they weren't, but they had that ability and they were going to find it soon um, because mm -hmm. they didn't have restrictions on those devices. They were just being handed iPads or phones to play games or whatever to keep themselves yeah. busy, but they had connective ability. Um, so the th my, my theory is also that you don't just hand over a keys to a car to a 17 year old or a 17 here in New well Jersey said. anyway. <laughs> you have education about it, you have classroom education, you have behind the wheel training, you, you, you get a permit for six months or so that you have to drive with a uh, adult driver. You know, you don't just hand a device over to a child. Right. I'm sorry. So it's, it should be a complete learning experience from the first time you hand that phone over. Um, stay connected, review the text messages every day together and have conversations. It's all about conversations and communication. You know, be part of this, whatever social media platform is downloaded on that phone, you should be a part of that. I mean, I'm not saying this for a 20 year old, but as you give young people and it's a process and you just calling out the simplest um, kind of pushing of the limit like you know did you really mean it this way this is the way i read it and it sounded a little harsh or it sounded a little mean you know is that really how you intended it you know it's yeah. sort of like my generation learning that you don't type in all caps it's like shouting at somebody <laughs> right i mean simple little simple simple things you don't maybe use words that can be misunderstood and the right. thing is is sometimes people even say oh well my friend and i we understand each other you know um we 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 say maybe both of that same race or both both gay or whatever and that we, those slurs don't mean anything to us they're mm -hmm. like a joke but you don't know what the other people around you are hearing you don't know the innocent youth that are hearing it and saying oh this isn't a safe place for me because mm -hmm. they're joking like this um, so y y you have to be careful of the words that you choose. Yeah, absolutely. Again, more amazing advice and no doubt your brilliance in this and your understanding and research in this is, is part of what uh, you, the amazing work that you guys are doing at the foundation and putting out into the world for folks uh, to benefit from. So Jane, I, I cannot thank you enough for your time, uh, for your willingness to share again your story and parts of Tyler's story uh, with us and with our global learners today. Um, it is our sincerest hope at the School of Global Citizenry that uh, Spirit Day Global Learners is about more than just wearing our purple shirts, um, but instead that uh, today is a day where we begin, if we haven't already, working together to create um, bully-free schools and workplaces and religious communities so all of our LGBTQ and gender non-conforming siblings have a place to thrive and to live and to enjoy life together. Um, and 
absolutely we will be sending folks your way and to your website mm -hmm. and jane thank you for the work that you do in the world uh, thank you for sharing your story with us thank you